We're going from the Shinjuku West over across to Shinjuku East. Now that can be a little bit of a challenge. If you go into this train station, beware that it's the world's largest train station. It has 60 exits and a lot of lively activities all around. You'll find that Shinjuku is a lot of fun. It's a busy, busy area. If you want to get from the west side to the east side, you can bypass the station altogether by walking through this tunnel. And that way you'll quickly get over to the east side without getting lost. If you entered in that station, there's a good chance that you're going to get all turned around as we did and come back out on the west side when you think you're on the east side. But by going just beyond the station, just north of the station, through that tunnel, you'll come out in the East Shinjuku area, which is really a spot not to be missed when you're in Tokyo. This is certainly among the most popular shopping areas for the locals. There are several major boulevards here and some interesting little side streets. There's a few pedestrian lanes and wide sidewalks so that lots of people can make their way through this district. Day and night, Shinjuku is really a happening spot in Tokyo. It's certainly one of the top three busiest places in town, all clustered around that train station. The station has two million passengers pass through it every day. It's a remarkable spot. All kinds of shops here. There's some large department stores, there are small boutiques. There's lots of people out there crossing the streets. You're going to feel very safe though. Always in Tokyo, you're going to feel quite safe. There's some oddly dressed characters here and there, but not that many really. Surprised to find that most of the young people here are dressed in a, a normal, typical urban fashion. They are looking good. Looking good is very important to the Japanese. They love their clothes, they love their fashions. And you see lots of young people out here on the streets. They're the ones who like to do the shopping, go to the cafes, go out for some entertainment. And yet, of course, you know, Japan is an aging nation. There are fewer and fewer young people but you'd never know that from walking around on the streets at Shinjuku or some of these other places that we're going to be bringing you coming right up next in the program. Now we're going to head on into Shinjuku Station. There's an escalator that will take you up there and you run a gauntlet of pamphleteers promoting this and that. From the top of this escalator, you get a nice view looking back down at Shinjuku and then we make our way through the station Now this was like a Sunday afternoon when it's about at its least crowded We avoided rush hour in the station It would be super super crowded at that time of course But any time of the day or night You're gonna find lots of people here in Shinjuku station it's a little bit dizzying, but everybody is quite polite. There's no pushing and shoving, and at this time on a Sunday afternoon, nobody's in a rush. So this was really quite a delightful time to be here. And of course, there's a lot of shops inside the station. There's restaurants, there's cafes, there's snack bars. You can take the train from here on out into the country, or just take a metro line someplace else in the city. A whole number of different train lines intersect here at this world's biggest train station. Night and day, it's a busy spot. No, they weren't waiting for us, they're waiting to greet somebody coming in. And we look at the same area in the evening as well. You might want to see it during the day and then come on back at night to have a look at Shinjuku with all the lights on 
and the evening crowd out for their dinner. It's a great place to have dinner. And the shops stay open relatively late here. At least seven o'clock, eight o'clock, depending on the day. And then the bright neon displays come on. Really, Shinjuku is the most happening part of town. We'll show you some other places like Shibuya coming up and Ginza coming up shortly. And the locals are friendly. Hi. What kind of movie? Hi. How are you doing? Welcome to Japan. Yeah, thank you very much. Welcome, welcome. This neighborhood is very nice, huh? This Shinjuku. Shinjuku. Very busy? Uh, yeah, busy yeah, place. Busy, busy. You like it? Yeah, I love it. It's great. You have fun here? Yeah? You guys speak good English too. Well, That's great. Much. Okay. Okay, We're thanks going a lot. To uh, okay. okay? Okay Goodbye. then. Bye bye. Bye. Aloha. <laughs> Not that many Japanese speak English, so it's fun to run into some people who do. They study English in school, but mostly it's for reading and writing. You get by, no problem. Just sign language will get through any language barrier. And you can always find clerks in a store who speak enough to take your money and sell you what you want to buy. The Shinjuku area has got several large department stores like Mitsukoshi and there's the Times Square shopping complex. There's a lot of these smaller electronic shops here as well. It's not the Akihabara electronics district of town, that's on another location, but they do have a lot of great electronics on sale here anyway. Shinjuku has become the biggest and most popular shopping district in the city so you can find practically everything for sale here and then we moved hotels leaving Shinjuku and moving over to the Shibuya part of town we're staying here at the Cerulean Tower Hotel in Shibuya in the heart of Tokyo and we're fortunate to be speaking with Benita of the hotel, who's going to tell us about the hotel and a little bit about the surrounding area. So Benita, um, what can you tell us about the hotel? Hello, hi, my name is Benita Zhou. I'm a concierge of this uh, Cellulean Tower Tokyo Hotel. It's actually it's a Cellulean Hotel, but it's owned by a you know, Tokyo group in a Shibuya area. The, more than 80% of a Shibuya area is owned by Tokyo group, and this hotel has been built in you know, five years ago. The Shibuya is the, um, one of the most important heart of um, Tokyo. And this hotel is, has a 40th floor with a beautiful city view and as well as a Fuji mountain view together. Especially the day like winter, winter time, you can see the Fuji mountain in front of you like really clearly, it's very beautiful. We're staying right in Shibuya, which is really one of the main cultural and shopping and entertainment centers of Tokyo. And what is there for the visitor to do here in uh, Shibuya? Oh, there are so much things to do. I mean, I've been here for a little less than two years, but every day I'm finding a different shops, different restaurants, and different people. I believe that there are more than like 50,000 people walking across every day this in town. And a lot of a uh, combination of a uh, Western shops with the Japanese little bit typical, very small shop and the boutique, which is also all located in a, not even a five minute walking distance from this hotel. I'm not too sure if you have heard about the place called Harajuku, but the Harajuku also you can even walk from here 15 minutes. It takes about 15 minutes and the place and the called the, the street name called Omotesando and the Aoyama place is you could even walk here. A lot of people, a lot of tourists, they visit there and they see all the different things from all the Europe and also North America and different um, touristic things with a lot of Japanese young people's how they dress up, fashion, wild place exactly. Well, it never stops. Uh -huh. <laughs> it goes all around and around. 
So there's not too much of the old Tokyo left. I guess it's all no, new. No, if it's really, really old part of Tokyo, then you could go to Asakusa the temple, the oldest temple in Tokyo. Uh -huh. How long does it take by train from here to Asakusa? Asakusa, if you take the Ginja line, the train uh -huh. line called Ginja line, mm -hmm. it starts from the Shibuya station, which is like three minutes walking you know, right. away from here. Uh -huh. It takes about exactly 28 minutes by Ginja line. Oh. If so it starts, bad. it's not bad at all. It starts from hmm. a Shibuya station, so you don't have to worry about getting lost. So oh, go in the back way. The and then, mm -hmm. and when the train stops, then you can get off. That's Asakusa is also the last stop of the Ginza line. Oh, that's easy too then. It's and very, that's the old shrine and the old, old streets. Old shrine and old shrine with a lot of souvenir shops. And so we followed her advice and we're leaving our Cerulean Hotel. We'll be taking the metro from the Shibuya area over to Asakusa. Now, riding the metro can be pretty simple, as in this case, it was just the one Ginza line and we're going to take it to the end of the line. But other times it can be a little bit more complicated, especially if the station is crowded. In Tokyo, basically, there are two separate private metro systems. And if you buy a ticket for one system, it's not good on the other system, unless you get a day pass, in which case it would be good to ride any train or bus anywhere. But they have the TRTA company and the TOEI company, so you want to make sure that you're buying the right ticket for the right train.